Hi, everybody. I'm Tan Long Ao. I will present our work, Rhythmic Gesticulator, Rhythm of Will Co-Speech Gesture Synthesis with Hierarchical Neural Embeddings. This is a joint work with Qing Zhe Gao, Yu Ke Lou, Bao Quan Chen, and Li Bing Liu. As we all know, gesturing is an important part of speaking. It adds emphasis and clarity to our speech and conveys essential nonverbal information. There are rich demands for high-quality gesture animation in many industries, such as games, films, and digital humans. But it's difficult and labor-intensive to produce high-quality gestures by traditional manual keyframe method. So, it would be benefit if gestures can be automatically generated by computer. Let's first define our task. We input speech, such as audio, text, and speaker style, through a synthesis system. Finally, get the generated gesture animation. There are several fundamental challenges. For gesture rhythm, unlike dance, which has a clear rhythm structure, the tempo coherence between speech and gesture is very complex. For somatics, Different speakers with a variety of motions can correspond to the same semantic signal, which causes an ambiguity problem. Meanwhile, semantic gestures and the corresponding text are not well aligned temporarily. Let's go through the related work. The 1990s belongs to the role-based method. The results of this method are expandable and controllable, but the transition between gesture units are unnatural. Later, probabilistic models are used to learn the rules, but this method still needs manually defined database. More recent research focuses on deep learning and trains end-to-end -end models, which frames the manual efforts this method can generate natural-looking motion, but can be difficult to guarantee matched beats and accurate meaning. To overcome the shortcomings of end-to-end -end models, our idea is to disentangle the rhythmic and semantic information from speech and gestures, and then explicitly model the relations between them to achieve the generation of both natural and meaningful motions. To achieve it, we should start from linguist theory. A gesture motion consists of a sequence of gesture faces that align with international units. The gesture face is often re referred to as gesture lexemes by linguists. These lexemes form a gesture lexicon, such as the finger in the middle. Each color denotes a gesture cluster. Well, we define the cluster center as the gesture lexeme. Different speakers may apply slight variations to the lexeme. Finally, get the real gesture segments. We refer to such variation as gesture style code. As for the relation between gesture motion and aligned audio, gesture lexeme usually relates to the high-level somatic audio feature why the gesture style code are determined by the low-level acoustic audio feature. Okay, let's take a look at the high-level idea of our system. For rhythm, we develop a rhythm-based normalization pipeline. We first identify audio beats, segment and normalize the speech into canonical blocks, generate gestures for every block, and align the generated motion to the rhythm of the speech. The framework provides the gesture model with an explicit hint of the rhythm, allowing the model to learn the pattern of gestural beats efficiently. For semantics, we first construct a gesture lexicon from motion dataset. Then, we disentangle high- and low-level audio features from audio blocks and use these audio features to interpret corresponding gesture lexeme and gesture style codes 
that come from the gesture lexicon. Finally, we can use these gesture lexemes and style codes to generate target gesture motions. More specifically, we encode each training motion block into a vector and look up a gesture lexeme that is the most similar to the vector in the gesture lexicon. Then, the selected lexeme is passed through the decoder to reconstruct the, or the original motion block. After training the vector quantized variation autoencoder, we can learn a categorical motion representation. To disentangle the multi-level audio features, we apply contrastive learning to decouple high and low-level audio features from different layers of the pre-trained audio encoder. We use text feature as the anchor. The highest layer audio feature is considered as the positive sample, while the features of the lower layers are treated as negative samples. And we fine-tune the encoder in a separate pre-trained stage using only the speech data. As for the mapping from audio features to gesture features, we design two interpreters to predict gesture lexeme and style code conditioned on high and low level audio features respectively. We use three data sets to evaluate our system, the Trinity data set, TED data set, and the Chinese data set was collected by ourselves. Okay, let's first see several samples generated by our system. This sample is generated by using a public speech. I am here with students at Wakefield High School in Arlington, Virginia. And we've got students tuning in from all across America, from kindergarten through 12th grade. And I am just so glad that all could join us today. And I want to thank Wakefield for being such an outstanding host. Give yourselves a big round of applause. Although our model is trained on an English or Chinese data set, we can still handle the cross-language scenario, such as this speech in French. De manière culturelle, artistique, sociale, mais aussi émotionnelle. Aujourd'hui, on se demande encore comment est-ce que tant de gens sont venus et sont revenus We can easily augment our system to achieve motion style editing by adding a style signal block as an extra input of the Lexium interpreter. This video shows the results of controlling hand height, hand speed, and hand radiance. Just straight and kind of, and there's this fantastic thing where like, um, like my dad made some sort of like inappropriate joke uh, or something like that, and I like, so like the the problem like that's perfectly fine but then there's stuff when when you start selling it as a like self-defense thing which a lot of martial arts like that's how you just just kind of austere and uh, just like well carried um man just like kind of you know like like that old classic like granddad kind of figure Gen as for objective evaluation we adopt three commonly used metrics maje MAD and FGD. Moreover, we also propose a new metric to evaluate the rhythmic performance, which is PMB, as the percentage of matched beats. As shown in this table, our system achieves the best performance on all metrics. We further conduct user studies. As we can see, our system receives higher scores than the other system, as shown in orange color, and is closer to the ground truth, as shown in green color. To show the ability of disentanglement, we cluster all high-level audio blocks and get several clusters, where each cluster essentially index the audio clips with similar semantics, for example, many, quite a few, lots of. 
and this cluster only corresponds to a few gesture lexemes. But if we do the same process for the low-level audio blocks, as we can see, the clusters will correspond to the most of the gesture lexemes. The exper experiments confirm the correlation between the high-level audio features and the gesture lexemes, as well as the semantic disentanglement of multi-level audio features. Here is a demo. There are so many people. More monkeys are here. No water, no food. Never give up. He is my best friend. Please believe me. Starting middle or high school. You are the top one. In our system, the rhythm-based segmentation pipeline can effectively improve the performance of the rhythm. Let's see a demo. The left result was generated by the system without our rhythm-based segmentation pipeline, while the right includes the pipeline. But the thing is that if you've actually like fought people, if you've actually like done stuff like Thai kickboxing or things like that, from the objective result mentioned before, we know that the gesture lexeme is important to achieve quality motions. This demo shows the comparison of the system without gesture lexeme. The gesture lexeme predicted by the statistical method, where the lexemes are selected based on the frequencies in the training dataset, and the lexeme predicted by our learning-based interpreter. And, you know, like you'd have people that would comment like, this is bad, sad face or whatever. I don't know. This is, you're an idiot, lol. Um, but like for ages, like that's why YouTube was where people were just like, I'm just going to put this thing and make like put it out there in the world and it doesn't matter. We also study the inference caused by the gesture style code, which can be considered as a fine green style. This demo shows the comparison of the system without gesture style code, randomly sampled style code, and the style code predicted by our learning-based interpreter. Henry, Henry Cavill, who's the actor for Superman, he, uh, apart, he's doing another film with Paramount Pictures. A speaker typically stops gesticulating during a silent pause. To deal with silent periods well, we develop a new method named the silent period hint. In brief, when meeting a silent period, we encourage the lexeme interpreter to compute a specific silent lexeme that corresponds to a silent gesture. Please refer to our paper for more details. Here is a demo. No one will ever pay you what you're worth. No one will ever pay you what you're worth. As a conclusion, we present a new rhythm and semantics of well code speech gesture synthesis system. For rhythm, we develop a robust rhythm based segmentation pipeline to ensure the temporal coherence between speech and gestures, which we find is crucial to achieving rhythmic gestures. For semantics, we devise an effective mechanism to relate the disentangled multi-level features of both speech and motion, which enables generating gestures with convincing semantics. There is still room for improvement in our work. First, our B detection algorithm is not perfect. We have assumed that the gesture beats coincide with the verbal stresses, but in practice, Gesture beats may not always correspond to stressed syllables. How to accurately model the complex gesture rhythm is an exciting topic for further exploration. Second, our system can only capture semantic gestures that repeatedly appear in the dataset. Learning semantic gestures 
that are sparsely distributed in the data set is still challenging. Finally, we only consider the upper body gestures in this work. Generating full body gestures is a valuable topic for future exploration. Thank you for your attention. Lastly, let me play a co-music gesture synthesis demo to finish today's presentation. <laughs>